the complexity of high frequency trading makes it hard for some of us to understand why we should pay attention to what these traders are doing. Some critics explain it this, uh, this way. By getting in the middle of trades, thanks to their high speed, high frequency traders are charging the equivalent of a very slight tax or toll on every transaction. And that tax is paid by the big institutional investors who manage your money in mutual funds or pension funds. Taken individually, the tax is very small, but taken together, the critics say the amounts add up to death by a thousand cuts. Let's get, let's get some reaction now to the new rules that SEC Chair Mary Jo White is proposing, proposals that are sure to spark opposition from some high-speed trading firms. George Calhoun is the Director of Quantitative Finance Programs at the Stevens Institute of Technology in New Jersey. He helps educate students in quantitative finance, some of whom go on to work at high-frequency trading firms. Uh, George, first of all, you read the SEC's uh, Chair's speech today. What stood out? What jumped out to you about it? It's uh, very important. It's a very impressive and thoughtful uh, speech. It's something that obviously has a lot of substance behind it. Um, look, the way I would characterize its importance is they, she says in the speech that the last time they really looked at market structure was in the 1990s, which is 20 years ago. None of this high frequency uh, phenomenon that, you're, that this piece is uh, addressing existed at that time. Uh, so regulators kind of step in once every 20 years, like Rip Van Winkle, and they, you know, they fix a, a structure, and the market keeps evolving, and that's what's happened. So they've got to catch up with that again. And I thought that was the th the tone of her presentation today was that they're they're going to put back on the table the big issues of market regulation. But the knock on some regulators is that even when they do jump in, maybe they're jumping back and looking. Say Ten years ago, what was happening, but they're still not up to date on all the stuff that's happening right now. Did you get that impression from no, Mary that's, White? that's what impressed me about the, the, the speech today. She says in there, we're not going to turn back the technology clock. They're going to embrace, and she also says, by the way, that the markets are actually, by most measures, healthier today than they were ten years ago. It's just that there are these issues that have the unintended consequences of the technology, if you will. So I treat it as a very uh, thoughtful, substantive uh, orientation of this regulator to uh, what's going to be a complex issue. And it's going to take years to probably sort out the rulemaking in the right way. Now, uh, in layman's terms, what is the way that the SEC or that regulators can go in and try to examine or review what firms are doing? Well, she lays out about five or six uh, initiatives in this presentation, and several of them are kind of I think easy, straightforward things to do. So they're going to bring the high frequency firms and some of the dark pool trading firms, so called, under a, a little bit stronger regulation, more disclosure, more transparency, which is, is all to the good. And it, it's not going to change anything in a big way. And I don't think it's going to be that controversial. But the really important things are the, are the points at the end of her speech where she says, we're going to put this entire regulatory structure that was put in place about 10 years ago to try to guarantee uh, fairness in the markets. But a lot of people have criticized that structure as having had the unintended consequence of propagating so many markets and so many different trading venues that it really created a lot of the gaming opportunities that people have now started to take advantage of. As far as that gaming is concerned, some of these firms say, look, we've invested a lot of money. Other people are welcome to invest money in their own algorithms to try to do the same thing. What's wrong with that argument? Look, as an American and a capitalist, I would say nothing's <laughs> wrong with that argument. But uh, as, a, as a market uh, capitalist, I know the outcome of that argument, which is that equilibrium will set in. The, the, it's already happening. High frequency trading, I don't want to say its day is done, but it's definitely crested. You mentioned that it's going to take several years to sort this out in the language and whatnot. How much pushback do you see coming from the high frequency traders in all of this? Or do you see them being cooperative and trying to at least shape what the SEC does? I think they're going to be generally cooperative. I, based on this speech, I don't see anything in there that if I were a high frequency trader that I would regard as a threat to my business model. In fact, she says there are a variety of different, stu many academic studies that support the idea that costs have come down, liquidity's improved. A lot of things in the market work better today partly because of the presence of the high frequency guys. So I don't think she's threatening their business model, and I think they're going to perceive that and go along with the rulemaking process. George Calhoun, Director of Quantitative Finance at the Stevens Institute of Technology. George, thanks for coming in. We Thank appreciate you, it. Thank you, sir.